All the good ones, huh? Only the good ones. I don't care a whole lot for the royal family, but man, she's the one I like. God damn it. Fingers crossed everything will be fine. But even as an Irish man, I have to say that news this evening about Kate, Catherine, Middleton, the Princess of Wales. It's always the fucking Princess of Wales, too, huh? <clears throat> it's shattering. Mm, I gotta say, I just got in the doors at that dinner with Louise and Fergal, lovely, lovely viewers of the channel, very, very nice people, and uh, treated me to a lovely dinner, lovely watch conversation, and even gave me some gifts, some wine, some amarone, and so on. And a cigar, which I'm going to light up. This is a Romeo and Giulietta purchased over at uh, Smoking Moses earlier today. I have to move over in front of my candle. <laughs> As usual, my candle is uh, got just grabbing all the attention. <clears throat> But I just got in. I got to, uh, saw this news. First of all, I saw Russia. What happened in Moscow? Fuck me. Though I suppose we shouldn't be too surprised between one thing and another. Somebody's going to lose their shit. Tends to happen. People tend to lose their shit. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's pretty much a slogan you can put on a lot of things. A lot of things. When people are mad as hell, and they're not going to take it anymore. But uh, now i got to say, I mean, all the rumors, myself and Dirk tonight, we're supposed to talk about all the silly conspiracy theories about uh, where is Kate, where is Kate Middleton, where is she gone? I have a little fun with that, honestly, we're supposed to, uh, because there's a lot of funny rumors going around, you know, people make, making up all sorts of stuff. In jest, of course. But I think... For many, with an underlying worry that uh, there was something serious going on. Well, I suppose there is. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys, but like this woman, this woman is dreamy. She is amazing. If you give a shit about the royal, again, I'm an Irishman. What the fuck do I care about the royals? But if you do, that's got to be your idol right there. That's a powerful... Look at the scorching intelligence in that woman. The elegance. <sighs> One of the most perfect brides I've ever seen in my life. She's not dead yet. I'm not doing anything. I'm like, she's going to pull through fine, I'm sure. Just devastating news. A young, elegant, magnificent woman like that receive such horrific fucking news like that <clears throat> all the good ones man fuck well anyway let's hope uh, let's hope she pulls through I was looking forward to her being the face of the monarchy Look at that photo. Amazing. Anyway, how are you guys? How's your evening? English Rose, that's a good one. Head Grandsman, English Rose. There's a good way of putting it. That's an English Rose, guys. <clears throat> Let's 
on her little speech this evening. So measured and... Um, balanced and generous, honestly. She's like, I'd like to thank everyone for their concern. It's like, no, people were saying all sorts of shit about you. But she uh, kind of kept on the high road there. So elegant, this woman. Yes. Again, if you're going to be the royals, I think the whole thing is a little bit silly. I would, wouldn't I? I mean, of course I would. However, they're born into this stuff. I guess she wasn't, but she was married into it. But man, did she take that mantle? She took that in her hand and she took it with grace. You know, being a royal, I don't imagine it's much fun at all. After all, didn't fucking Meghan Markle bail out and head to California instead? Like, it's it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. You're blessed with incredible privilege, but you're also cursed with this responsibility. And some people take, take that responsibility with a little grace. To quote the late queen, duty first, self second. And she was doing that. She is doing that. Yes, extremely elegant and magnificent woman. Grace personified. If you're going to do the royal thing, if you're going to do all that pomp and circumstance, that's how you do it, kids. Anyway. I hope she's okay. I'm sure she'll be fine. I hope she pulls through. So crazy, isn't it? I guess there was something to hide after all. I guess that photoshopped fo photo of her happily with her kids and so on was that was made for a reason. They're all floundering in there, wondering what to do, when to deliver the news. Because this is devastating to a lot of Brits. Can you imagine, you know, the Patriots? Tears running down their eyes right now. Let me get to the chat. Who's in the room? Sorry, guys. I just got distracted. I walked in the door and I got that. I was like, oh. Poor thing. And, and the responsibility as well. You know? Because she's a figurehead. She has to go through it with grace because of all the other normal, regular people who have to do go through the same battle, exactly the same thing. It's the funny thing about illness. It doesn't give a shit how much money you have and how privileged you are. It's like the rain. The rain pisses down on the rich and the poor in exactly the same way. JDMTL is a new member. Cool, man. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. Let me see what level you went for, because uh, there are different levels, and I have to see it on a different screen completely. Not about chat. Where is it? Spritz level. Okay, man. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the team. Omega fanboy is having a Balvenie. 12-year-old. Tudor Black Bay. 
Black Heritage, Mark II on the wrist. Nice big watch for a big guy. Dean's in the room. Thanks for the Ireland video. Enjoyed it. Here's a Selex Spritz. And you're next at the bar. That's about two Selex Spritz, man. Actually, they're British pounds. That's 10 bucks. That's about 12. That's three, nearly three Selex Spritz. Thank you. Legend. Thank you, Dean. <clears throat> Greetings from Mexico, huh? Pedro. Mexico. Jealous. How's the weather there? Probably really nice. It's turning around here in Venice right now. <clears throat> James Ball. Kate gets looked after by privilege. We may get looked after by the NHS in 10 or 12 weeks' time if we're lucky. Yeah, obviously she's going to have the best of care, certainly. And Britain has a socialized healthcare system, as do many countries in the modern industrialized world. Don't spit at it, dude, James. <laughs> you want to go live in the States for a few years? When you feel like something's wrong with you and you have to think, do I have the money to go get checked up? Count your blessings, man. You don't know how deep that rabbit hole goes. Try being an American. They live with that stuff and way worse every day. I mean, if they're rich and they have all, they have all their insurance and blah, blah, blah. And even the insurance won't cover it half the time. <clears throat> After all, that is the point of insurance companies. To figure out ways not to pay up when that day comes along. J.E. Love the Ireland video. Yeah, I'll talk about the Ireland video. Thank you much, so much, guys. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Local hero, local hero Ed. Why do I have difficulty saying that? Started watching Ireland video. Obviously not finished it yet. Yeah, some people couldn't make it through in one sitting. That's understandable. It's a long, it's a long uh, endeavor. Some others were saying, you know, I started watching it thinking, oh, I'll watch a few minutes, and I lasted all the way to the end. I got, you know, I forgot where I was and just watched the whole thing. And some were saying, you know, 90 minutes felt like 30 minutes, and that's great if that if that's what happened. Because <clears throat> that's my job done then. Myself and Dirk have gotten into it recently about long movies, because a lot of films out there these days that are really, really long, like Oppenheimer and stuff. And he has an aversion to long movies. You know, three hours is too long. I'm like, yeah, it was Godfather 2 or Godfather Part 1 too long? I don't think so. It all depends on how entertaining the movie is. If it's really well made and it's interesting, then uh, the three hours can fly by. And if it's shite, I tried putting on a movie last night just in the background so I could do some, I was doing some kind of academic work on files file transfers and stuff. And I just wanted something I could, what's the line? I've used it before. I don't want sad bastard music. I just want something I can ignore. <laughs> it's from uh, High Fidelity, John Cusack. Jack Black is like, okay, man, have it your way. You want to go listen to sad bastard music? I don't want sad bastard music. I just want something I can ignore. Yeah, I just wanted something I could ignore. And I put on uh, the one with Sidney Sweeney and that boring looking dude that Michaela doesn't like, whatever his fucking name is, <clears throat> where they meet in the Starbucks or the coffee place at the beginning. I was like, I'll stick on some rom-com in the background. 
something I could ignore. I couldn't ignore it. You know why? It was so fucking painfully awful. I was like, I need to turn this off. It's offending my senses. <laughs> I'm actually like, it's scarring my, my soul right now. And then I put on another one that came up called The Irish Wish with uh, whatever her fucking name is. And uh, I said, oh, maybe this is a funny little, the description said, you know, this woman travels to Ireland for a wedding to see the guy she was crazy about marry someone else. And I thought, okay, maybe there's an angle there. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. An offense to the senses. Doesn't matter how, like, like what the, what the premise is of your story. It's how you tell it. it it's how you tell the story that matters. <laughs> I mean, God knows Woody Allen told lots of stories about menage a trois and his favorite woman falling in love with the guy he hates the most and stuff like that. But he tells it so fucking well. <laughs> <clears throat> so cool hand luke 2019 oh i'm at the bloody stream eating the chowder <laughs> he's at the bloody stream right now he's having the chowder i showed him the video it's the dogs nice one he means the dog's bollocks, which is basically means it's great. It's like saying it's the bomb. Michaela's in the room. Shouldn't you be at work, my darling? The amount of people who spread wretched rumors about her, meeting Kate, husband cheating on her, getting another woman pregnant, also people accusing her of getting a facelift. How shameful. They are, yeah, I suppose they can curl away in the corner now. They can fucking sit in the apartment with the shades drawn for a while. Huh, Michaela? You're right. Here, here. I agree with you. Come on to Ibashers later in a couple of hours. Myself and Dirk will be talking about this stuff, I'm sure. You can let everybody know how you feel. Always welcome. Julius Caesar, what a name. Very sad news. Best wishes to Kate and her, and her royal family. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> Doesn't matter what sort of care you get. Cancer kills, guys. It kills the rich. It kills the privileged. And everyone else. I don't mean to be macabre. I'm sure she'll pull through. If and when she does. When she does. She better get the respect. Because as I said, the whole royal family thing isn't exactly my cup of tea as an Irishman. But when you see grace and poise and elegance in those kind of positions, it's impressive, all right? And as a uh, great, 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 great grandson of the original Queen of Ireland, who apparently had wonderful poise and excellence and a little bit of badassness, let's, let's face it. <laughs> Grace was a bit of a, a badass. I respect that stuff. These are leaders, leaders of men, leaders of, of the people. People need a leader. They need a hero. <clears throat> I don't know why they do, but they do. And some people are good at it. Some people ain't. Al Benedetti, your watch is on its way, by the way, Al. I sent it out the other day. So look out for it. Your Frollo watch, your Venice watch. 
Please allow me to buy your drink for all the hard work and effort you put into the Ireland video. Thank you, man. It's really amazing to think that just one man did it. Truly awe-inspiring. Thank you. Yeah, some people were saying, was it... Uh, thank you. It's very kind. Uh, some people were saying, oh, clearly your daughter was working on the... Now, listen, my daughter's extremely talented. Uh, cinematographer and, and so on. And we have done some cool work together, but no, she hasn't been, she hasn't collabed with me on the channel for quite some time. She's got her own shit to do. Last video we did together was two years ago, I think. So no, I think some people are saying, well, he's not holding the camera and it's following him, but that was my drone. <laughs> my drone was following me. You just program it to follow you, and it follows you, and then you just keep walking. <laughs> it's kind of spooky, actually. Yeah, man, thank you, Al. Thank you so much. We'll take a look at it in a minute. There's some questions that came up in the um, in the comments that I can answer. So people are curious, you know, spark their curiosity. I guess there's other... People out there with channels, they want to know what I'm doing. <clears throat> Kieran Kelly, guitarist, member for nine months. From the get-go, she was showed nothing but class. She showed, she has showed nothing but class and grace. You are right, man. An absolute lady who seems to have an amazing work ethic. Hopefully her strength will carry her through. She's definitely the best of British. I agree. When it comes in a package like that, guys, there isn't much you can say. What's going on with this? What's that? There isn't much you can say. Okay. I mean, that's, that's impressive. I'm not just talking about her looks, which are obviously stunning. She's beyond stunning. But yes. Ken Armstrong liked the Dublin video. Thanks. Yes. Uh, w. Paru Slovak. Sad thing that happened in Moscow. Ooh. Man, I feel like the world is about to take a turn. There's so much going on. There's so much... I feel like this a, the winds of change are here once again. Every now and then the world resets itself. Maybe these great crazy minds who control the world know that stuff, you know. People often talk about, you know, the great conspiracy of these elite clubs that control the world, you know, all that kind of stuff. The Illuminati. <laughs> Who knows if any of it's fucking true or not? But uh, one question they never seem to ask themselves is, are they right? You know... There's the old Bill Hicks thing. Anybody, any Bill Hicks fans in the room? I'm Bill, big, big Bill Hicks fan here. Uh, great, one of the greatest comedians, stand-up comedians in history. And he was like talking about when you become president, in his opinion, after they're done congratulating you and so on, you're taken into a room, a dark room, and there's 12 guys sitting at a table with big cigars. <laughs> and they basically tell you what's on your agenda for the next four years. <laughs> there's probably a lot of truth to that. Congratulations, Mr. President. Here's a list of things you can and can't talk about. We own your ass. But, you know, the other question never comes up. It's like, maybe they actually, maybe there's a purpose for that. 
you know, a lot of people think COVID was all a big conspiracy and a control mechanism to keep the masses in line. You know, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> That's impressive. You're giving these people a lot of credit if you think that shit, but okay. But nobody ever asked the question, did they need to? Did they have to? I remember the first video I made of it, the moon landing, because the moon, the moon watch. I'll talk about the moon swatch in a minute, guys. There isn't much to say, but I'll talk about it because um, it's news in the watch world. But I was talking, you know, a big speedy fan, and early in the channel, I was like, let's talk about the moon landing because, you know, there's so many people. When when I bought my first moon watch, the 1861 movement, in the big NASA box, the big thing, the guy in the watch store Nick, I'm trying it on. I'm loving it. And then he goes, meanwhile, do you believe that shit ever happened? I don't fucking believe it. <laughs> like he said that. He's selling me the watch. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know. Uh, so I, I spoke about that on a video. I made a long video about whether Omega were actually their flagship watch their icon was actually based on a lie don't worry don't worry don't don't freak out it's okay to think about something and ponder it as a thought experiment and not necessarily believe it okay we're grown adults I think it was Socrates who said the mark of a mature man is one who can play with thoughts. What's the word? I'm paraphrasing. You can play with thoughts as toys or something along those lines. Basically inferring that it's okay to put your mind inside the mind of another, you know, for a moment to understand things. <clears throat> Some of the greatest musicians we love did that, you know. Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne. What is this that stands before me? You know, he's picturing a man at the judgment and Satan in front of him. Ozzy wasn't there. <laughs> Ozzy probably wrote it sitting on a toilet or something. But he's projecting, he's putting his, his head inside. Some writers only write like that. Um, Kate Bush, one of my favorites. I don't think she ever wrote a song about her and her experience. She wrote in the mind of Kathy in uh, Wuthering Heights. She wrote in the mind of uh, Molly in Ulysses. In the mind of the army dreamer. She became these other characters like an actor, you know. Peter Gabriel, intruder. I like the touch and the smell of all the pretty dresses you wear. I like the sense of suspense when you know that I'm there and stuff. He's acting as the intruder. He's becoming the other person. He's speaking from their mind. Like in Manhunter, remember that film? Uh, the newer version was Red Dragon. They keep hiring that cop who caught Hannibal Lecter because he's a great knack of getting inside the mind of the serial killer to understand him and in a way be compassionate and therefore know his motives and where he might be and so on. It was a brilliant, brilliant idea. <clears throat> anyway, so it's okay to toy with thought. So I made that video about the, the moon the moon watch and whether it was based on a lie or not, you know. 
and it was my first experience with YouTube suppression. I was getting pretty good views at the time. At the time, getting 20,000 views for me was like extraordinary. And this one was really abysmal. And I thought, well, why? I mean, I was talking about it. It's, you know, it's a topic and it's a popular watch. And, and I realized that YouTube probably saw the title and heard keywords and the content and went, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> But the one thing I was saying in the video is like, let's say it is, let's say it was staged. And let's say the whole thing was farce and was there to raise the morale of the American people who were kind of in a, in a shit moment. Vietnam was heavily underway or was at the sick tail end of its life. Uh, the Vietnam War, I mean, uh, JFK, their favorite president had just been, had his head blown off. You know, America was feeling a little depressed. Maybe they needed something to pick them up. Um, and I, I make the argument in the video that this is a long time ago, over three years ago at this point, that maybe, maybe we needed, I think that I'd show a shot of a little, little girl opening her toys at a, by a Christmas tree, that imagination, that inspiration. You know, you tell your child about Father Christmas, you're lying to them. <laughs> you're, you're inventing a, a miraculous story in order to give them something to, to inspire them and make them feel a tingle of magic in the air. So maybe a bunch of guys got into a room one day and went, listen, we need to do this. And by the time anyone figures out it's a lie, we'll all be dead anyway, or we'll be old men. But in the meantime, it's going to inspire a lot of people to do a lot of great and fantastic things. And it's going to pick up the morale of the people. And it's going to scare other nations that are against us. You know, maybe they actually have to, to make that executive decision. You know, maybe a bunch of guys got in a room one day and went, listen, we need to invent some sort of fucking sickness <laughs> out of China because the world is about to take a weird turn. And yeah, we're going to be the assholes and some people are going to raise their fists in the air, but they don't know the job that we have. Do you ever think about that? Again, this is a thought experiment, okay? I'm not fucking losing my mind. I'm not, I'm not gonna, about to put on a fucking tinfoil hat. Wouldn't go on my head anyway with all this fucking hair, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Who knows? It's like all those politicians in the States right now looking at babies being pulled out of rubble in the Middle East. It's like, how can you not <laughs> condemn? You don't know what happened to these guys. You don't know if they got a phone call once they were put in their position or elected saying, listen, you can talk about this and this and this, but if you talk about this and this, we're going to kill you and your family and everyone you've ever known. Like, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> there could be a lot of stuff. JD, 28 books? Wow. You're the real deal. Thanks, JD. Thank you. It's a very nice thing to say. Scott Calvin, $100. Well, now I need to pull up a Eyebasher's thing here. Jesus, man, thank you. Thanks for getting my Pam 2020 back on the way home. Yeah, man. 
<clears throat> it's on its way. Please take this to help with the shipping in the joy bottle. Thank you, man. The shipping was 80. It was 80. Actually, I shipped out a bunch of the watches, the Frollo watches, and I charged people 30 for shipping. It was 80 for ship. All the all the shipments were 80 bucks. I fucking spent so much money the other day shipping everything out. Forget it. I would basically killed any profit that I personally make from it. It's gone, but whatever. I'll take it on the chin. One was cheaper. One was about 30 bucks. We went to the UK, but all the rest were going to Canada and the US and the stuff. Fucking. I was like, all right. Bad move, O'Malley. But thank you, Scott. Tim Wright, congratulations on part one of the Ireland video. Thank you, man. Did you watch it? <laughs> I doubt you got through it all. <laughs> Something tells me you didn't get through the whole video. It's fine. <laughs> watch it in parts. Like a good book. Can you believe there were scenes cut out? There were a ton of scenes cut out. Here are the scenes that were cut out off the top of my head. St. Patrick, St. Patrick's Cathedral, chance in your arm, that whole thing, the term chance your arm comes from there. Whole video, a whole scene on that. Um, the Doors of Dublin. I must have filmed like 600 doors, the Georgian doors, those beautiful, colorful doors, and I made a whole segment Um with the Gazzaladra music, for the Rossini, La Gazzaladra, the thieving magpie. Huge montage. Tons of doors going past. It took me days and days to even edit that together. That got dumped. Um, a whole thing on the spike, the, uh, the, the spire, as they call it in Dublin. The Dubliners have other names for, for it. <laughs> the Spire of Light on O'Connell Street. And how and what it replaced the Nelson's Tower that was blown up by the IRA in the middle of the night. It's a whole story about that. And how the Irish Army had to demolish the rest. And it was a big mess and it was super embarrassing for for the Irish Army because the IRA were able to do a better job illegally in the middle of the night. And there's a couple of other scenes. Yeah, I have to just kill them. Otherwise, it would have been two hours. That's the first time it's happened to me that I've had to this in most of those big videos, Lisbon, Trieste, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you're only seeing like five or eight percent of the, the footage that was shot, but you're seeing the best parts. <clears throat> and I have to leave a lot of other stuff just lying there. But um, rarely uh, does it happen that I take a full, completed, edited scene and dump it. That's that's pain. Because <laughs> those scenes aren't exactly an afternoon of editing. They're usually days and days. And I mean days, I mean till six in the morning kind of thing. Three bottles of wine later. <laughs> but you got to do it. You got to do it. Darren Roberts likes some Bill Hicks, hard-hitting comedic genius who likes his rock stars dead. <laughs> yes, sing from your fucking heart. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mommy, this this album you gave to me, the, the singer has a blood bubble coming out of his nose. Shut up and listen to him play. Yeah, the whole idea is like in heaven, the music is shit, and in hell, the, the tunes are good. The devil's got better record collections. <laughs> I 
catch up here behind. I get on a rant, you know. Um, RR. Oh, she and that piece you did in Ireland was wonderfully done. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing your passion. Legend, man. Thank you. Here, there's Tobster. Seeing as I was talking about conspiracies, <laughs> Tobster's like, <laughs> his ears perk, perk up. Think of it 17x over 50 years ago. Now, with carbon fiber, fiber computers. Uh, ceramic composites, you mean? Super advanced pressure vessels. And they have no idea. No. They just fucking crashed the thing on the moon a couple of weeks ago. It landed the wrong way around. And all the cameras that were supposed to eject and come out and fly, they all went out the wrong way. <laughs> it's like, here we are all this year, all these years later. And still in 69, they did it and broadcast it live. That's the fucked up part for me. Why on earth would you broadcast it live to the world? What if something goes wrong? <laughs> Every family curled around the TV gets to watch the poor guys fucking suffocate to death live. I don't think so. <laughs> or the thing just goes, the TV goes blank. We're experiencing te technical difficulties. You gotta say, it was set up to for people to really doubt it. You gotta say, Nathaniel, two bucks, cigar smoking, Coca Cola executives invented Santa. Yeah, like uh, Don Don Draper invented love, the concept of love to sell nylons, right? <laughs> Four fifty in the room. Give us a thumbs up, guys. Weaker this week. Last week was a big hit, big blast. I guess you guys love the drama and the watch stuff, huh? <clears throat> Kieran Kelly. Lots asked, why is it taking Oshin so long with the Ireland video? Well, now you've seen it. Surely your question is, how the hell do you make it so quickly? My analogy has always been, as good as the BBC, the Ireland one just isn't, is, it's so much better. Wow. Thank you so much, man. Legend. Thank you, man. 50 bucks. Thanks so much. Hey. Feels good. Part two is going to be, oh man, it's going to be a weird one now because part two is going to be, it'll be like, will it be good? Will it be as good? Will it be worse? Will it be better? <laughs> the extra pressure, like I needed more of that. <laughs> I think part two is going to be a little bit different, honestly. It's going to explore the uh, the mystical a bit more, I think. Because the truth is, I'm not a tour guide, and I'm not a... <sighs> Ten recommendations if you're traveling to Dublin. You know, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Any of you who have come to Venice or are interested in Venice or Italy since the channel started, I don't think you... You 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 were your interest was piqued because you saw my three favorite restaurants. If you're coming to Verona, you know, or whatever. Hopefully, I captured the mood of the place. Um, a bit more. So, with the Dublin thing and the Ireland thing. That was in the back of my mind too, you know, like make it tell a bit of a story, tell some stories there and show some places, but also 
have a theme going on, and there is a theme. Angelo, the Ireland video is very good. Thank you, Angelo. It's not finished. Only halfway there. But thank you. <laughs> William, Stanley Kubrick supposedly filled the moon landing. <laughs> no, because he would have told us at the end. Though there are some who believe that there are, there were scenes cut from Eyes Wide Shut, which was the last film that he made. And it was released weeks before he, he died, actually. Some people believe there's code in that movie telling us the truth. <laughs> people get crazy with their ideas. Hey, listen, conspiracy theories are fun as fuck, right? Let's, let's admit it. It doesn't matter whether, whether they're true or not. They're fun. We love that shit. I suppose that's really what happened with Kate Middleton as well. People just love to, uh, they love conjecture. They love a little bit of gossip and a little bit of, what do you think? But now that it's, now that the truth has come out, I think, I think a lot of people are holding their heads down <laughs> and for good reason. Scotty H PayPal. Thank you so much, man. Always appreciate it. The Timeless Watch Channel at gmail.com. That's nice, man. Thank you. That dude, Dave, $50. As a fellow dub, I agree with Kieran. Were you guys happy with the portrayal of Dublin? Was it okay? You know, I haven't lived there in a long time, and there was a feeling of imposter syndrome a little bit going back to dublin you know how much do i really know about the place anymore you know it did occur to me <clears throat> tell you one thing i had no idea the channel was so popular i mean you saw a couple of you saw a few instances of running into people on the streets there they were the ones where the camera was on. I had no idea. <clears throat> it, was, uh, it, was, it was very nice. I met a lot of very nice people. Let's take a look at it. Why not? Once again, I just want to put her face on the screen again. I hope you make it through this, and I'm sure you will. You stunning, beautiful, elegant woman. I hope you do. Um, Ireland, yeah. Let me look at the video a bit and some of the questions that people had about how it did some of the stuff. First of all, views are shit. And just, I know people are upset about that, but truthfully, guys, this is just something you have to get used to with, um, with these. When you have high quality content, especially long form content, there's nothing you can do. It will never have the views that um, that some something throwaway will have. You know, do, do some silly video going. Why Rolex will always be better than Omega, or you know, or whatever, you know, or something. I don't know. <sighs> Mediocre, <laughs> but just like with some some little bite-sized title or whatever. It will always get more, more views. That's just the way it is. If you look at my channel, most of the videos with the poorest views are the videos you guys love. It's always been the case. So please don't be upset about that. It's just the way of it. And I was fully expecting it. 
I don't do these videos because I think I'm going to get millions of views. I know I won't. If I wanted videos with millions of views, I would just do Lenny every day or talk about why Trump's watches are shit or, you know, why some boxer's watch is a fake or whatever fucking throwaway nonsense you want. You know, that, that gets the views. So don't worry. I'm happy with, what is it now? 26,000 or something. That 26,000 means more to me than the 126 I got for talking about the new pro Rolex price list. You know, <laughs> I'll never watch that video again. You know, I made that video, and just posted it, and I never came back to it. <laughs> you know, it's you watch it once and you've, you, you, you've got all your info, and that's that. This, hopefully, people can come back to time and time again because it's rich, dense content. Totally different thing. Okay, so one person was asking about um, how I got the sound. Now, I did share a tab, didn't I? Tell me you shared a tab. Let me just make sure so I because I fucked up the last time. Do you remember? And share the tab. Goddamn tab. Chrome tab. Here we are. Yeah. There. Um, one guy, I guess he must be a musician. Uh, he was saying how I got the sound so good for Goitze, the traditional band. These guys. So what I did uh, with with this, uh, obviously I filmed it. Clearly, I'm standing there in the in the venue. It was in Whelan's, actually, um, in Dublin. And uh, I recorded, you know, the sound coming in from the camera. I have my phone recording the sound. And I have a little Osmo pocket thing recording, and that's taking sound. So I'm trying to get three different angles. Uh, but none of them sounded very good. They were all kind of shitty sounding. They had some echo and some liveness. So you hear the crowd there cheering. That's coming in from that. But one guy was like, he was like, how did you, you know, the sound is pretty good. And you can hear the kick drum and the rhythm and He's like, did you get it straight from the console, from the desk? No, I did not. What I did was I took the, um, I went and found the original song, the studio recording, and I stripped it out and I placed it over the video and I stretched the audio so it time, so it uh, synchronized. I had to stretch it. They were playing a little fast, which is normal for, Live bands, live bands normally play far too fast, unless they're stoned. If your drummer smokes weed, then you don't have that problem. <laughs> but if not, everyone's going to play a little bit too fast live. That's just the way it is. And um, so I had to uh, speed it up so it matched in time. And then I left in my phone sound and my camera sound to add that, that extra live vibe in there, a little bit of echo or whatever. And uh, it gave it that live sound of the room. So obviously that crowd is coming in from my phone, from my camera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, the music itself, most of it, what you're hearing is from the 
is a blend. So uh, that's what I did there to make that happen. It did. It doesn't match up perfectly. Honestly, these first few frames of the guy in the banjo actually don't match up. I know for a fact that the band saw this because they tagged me on Instagram today. So <laughs> if the guy, the banjo player saw it, he was probably like, uh, that's not in sync. You know, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing aren't exactly. I, I actually, on that downbeat, when they pick up pace and they go faster, because they're in a din -da -din -da -din -da -din -da -din, they're in a slower pace, and then they start speeding up and they go, you know, they completely change tempo mid, you know, song, which is fucking crazy. To me. So what I did was I, I lined up the audio from that downbeat. You see her hand coming in on the left. Because she's getting ready to hit on that downbeat and fucking accelerate the song. That's where I lined it up. So it was from that moment. That's that's how I did that. So that answers that question. What other questions were there? I'd have to remember now. Oh, yeah. So the drone stuff, like some people are like, oh, somebody else is filming. Nah, it's a drone. Uh, follows you uh, through. Um, actually, I broke the. This was the first drone. I, I broke two drones. No, I, I broke one. I lost the other for weeks in a tree and I had to buy another one. I had three drones. <laughs> I was in, uh, I was in on the West Coast filming and I met a couple who are filmmakers and. They're like, oh, you're doing a documentary on Ireland. Like, we assume you have a drone. And I was like, no, I've never bought a drone. Like, should I? And the guy looks at me, he goes, you're going to make a documentary on, on the west of Ireland and you don't have a drone? <laughs> What's wrong with you? And I was like, God, he's right, isn't he? He's fucking right. So this is all uh, the first drone. This mystical path continues down through the valley. Okay, now here's my recommendation. Have eerie feeling of being watched by mystical Irish characters. Here's my recommendation. Never fly a drone in a place like that, ever. I don't care how sophisticated your drone is. See all those branches overhead? They are <laughs> traps. And the, and the drone, like, it has sensors and it knows when there's things near it and it avoids them but it's not a, an exact science guys and here i am with this thousand dollar drone that i just bought with it you know and bought all the accessories and so on and then i'm walking along like it ain't no thing and uh it actually hit the first one hits one of those uh one of those uh, shrubs or whatever, it was a branch or whatever, just clipped it. Drone came down onto that little path there. That's 30 miles an hour and smashed into pieces. <laughs> and that was it, within a few days of getting it. So I was like, okay, well, heartbreak begins now. Great. I actually went back to Glendalough three times to get the shots done. The second one got lost. So I buy a whole other one, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Fucking disaster. I buy a whole other one. And I'm doing these shots of the round tower. And one of these shots here, you see this tree? You see that tree there? Let me make sure you guys are seeing because I have to keep double checking. This tree here that's nearly as tall as the round tower itself, this one over here. <sighs> well, wait till you see. There's a shot here with the sun. That shot there, beautiful with the sun just behind the tower. I, I went left. I strafed to the left. You see it strafing slightly to the left there. Oh, fuck. How can I go through this? Uh... Well, I cut the shot, you know, I make the edit fast. But had I left the edit go, the drone winds up in the tree next to it. Didn't sense the tree next to it. 
It was the Mini DJI Mini Pro 3. And the 4, the Mini Pro 4, was just released at the same time. And it had side sensors. Go figure. <clears throat> so this thing wound up. I got all this beautiful footage on this sunny day. And anybody from Ireland knows that sunny days are fucking few and far between. So when you get one, you're delighted. Well, that drone wound up in the tree. And it's 100 feet up. What are you going to do? You can't climb the tree. It's out of the question. It's 100 feet, of a, and it's a dense tree. You can't get the fire brigade in because they're not going to help me. This is a sacred place in Ireland. So I'm not going to get a big fire engine just to get your stupid ass drone out of the tree. Apparently, Wicklow, that area of Wicklow, is just full of drones lost in trees. You realize how small you are and helpless you are. Birds have such an advantage. There's actually a happy, happy ending to that story because I went back there with my mother and my aunt weeks later. On the off chance, I actually went back now with another drone to, to do all the filming again because not only did I lose the drone, but I lost the card that's in the drone with all the footage I spent hours filming. It's all stuck in this thing. <laughs> A hundred feet up in a tree. And uh, we went back. I had already gone back and there was no sign of it. But then we went back again. I refilmed the stuff and then we just popped over there to see by chance. And I sent up another drone into the same area of the tree to see if I could see it on my screen down with the controller. <laughs> Fuck. I couldn't see it. And I'm like, oh, it's really buried. And then we were about to leave, and my aunt said, Is that it? And she saw it on the ground, on the, in the in the grass, feet away. I mean, 15 feet away from the tree. Just by chance. <sighs> it was a really funny scene, actually, because I'm walking, I'm going through all the grass, looking around. I'm thinking if the thing fell out, some kid probably found it and pinched it. Or it smashed to bits, or it's stuck up there forever. Because this thing is full of propellers and stuff. It's, there's no way it's, it's not going to slide out of the tree. It's just impossible. It's a dense tree. <clears> there <throat> would either have to be a crazy strong storm... And even then, if it shifted, it would fall into different branches and maybe fall down 15 feet, but then get lodged in another part of the tree. Forget it, it's gone forever. One guy at a store, at a tech store, said you should buy a cheap drone, like a $60 drone, find it in your screen, and race the other drone into it. Like kamikaze one into the other. Lose the $60 drone, but hopefully bash the expensive drone with the nice camera and all your fucking footage out of the tree. <laughs> it was a long shot, really long shot. Our theory is that the birds didn't like it. The birds were up there going, fuck you, you're foreign, get out of here. And some angry raven or trush or something some bird up there went, you know what? You're in my favorite spot here and you're upsetting me because you're ugly. They saw it as an intruder, some sort of foreign object. And one of them grabbed it and flung it out of the tree. That's our theory. Uh, so, yeah. My advice, if you're inter interested in getting into drone photography, don't. It will break your heart. Mind you, when you go out to places like uh, farther out, when I go out, well, there was okay. Um, these were nice shots. But like there, the Sally Gap, there's a tree in sight. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> you want nothing that can grab the thing. That's perfect terrain for a drone, guys, because there's, you know, you're clear. You're in the clear. Oh, yeah, then I did this naughty thing. 
I might get sued for this or something. I don't know. Maybe someone will see it and go, yeah. Uh. But I fly it out over the Guinness estate where the Guinness family used to live or do live. <clears throat> Billionaires. Where is it? Uh, there. Yeah. That's where they live. That's their little beach down there. I think this is the house up here. I'm showing this, I hope. Yes. Do a full screen on that so you guys can see. This is the house over here. This is the estate. This is their their lake, Tay Lake. That's where you live when you're a gazillionaire, guys. And uh, apparently it's forbidden airspace. So I got I got my shots and I turned the fucker around and got it back home as soon as I could. I'm up there. That's me. Up at the top. Crazy, right? Wild shit. Let me get some super chats. I'll remove that. <clears throat> Stevie CI, 10 British pounds, loved the Dublin vid, lived in Ranala for a year in the early 80s when it was cheap. Yeah, it's not cheap anymore, my friend. Far from it. Cheerful and a bit rough. Yeah, Ranala would have still been rough back then. Fond memories. Keep up the great work. Thanks, man. Thanks for the 10 bucks. Legend. Um, Daniel, five bucks, just joining now. Did you talk about the Snoopy Moon Swatch? No, not yet. I'll do that in a minute. Thanks for the reminder. Dean, drone fun for Ireland Part 2. Don't worry, all those shots in, uh, for Ireland Part 2 are done. But I will take the fund and buy some wine because it's editing time. I'm already deep into it. Now, all the shots have been done. They're all done. It took six weeks of shots. And they're all done. Araya, uh, Putra, how far can the drone go? Far away uh, in on one axis, I believe 12 miles. I think the first one was 12 miles. The new one I have now, the the DJI 4 Mini Mini 4 Pro, whatever it's called, which is, by the way, that's the one you want if you're going to get one. That's the one. Um, I think that has 20 miles of range. And it can go really high, but there's a restriction on it because you don't want to send it up too high, right? Because you plane might hit it and then <laughs> then you're really in trouble and now there are new restrictions coming out in the states uh there's they're rolling them out where the drones can't go over a certain like 200 meters or something in the air upward i mean um because of safety concerns you know It's a thing in the controller, actually. It's not in the drone itself. It's in the controller. And the one that broke, I still have the controller for. And the the word on the street is those controllers are going to be worth a lot of money once those things roll, once the restrictions roll out. Because when the restrictions start, there'll be a software update, a firmware update for the controllers that will put in that restriction. So anybody with an old controller who doesn't run the update won't have that restriction and they're going to be like gold dust and everybody is going to want that drone that doesn't have the restriction. <laughs> so I have it over in the corner of the room there, sitting there for whenever that happens and I'll stick it on eBay for like 2,500 bucks. Crazy. Learned a lot about drones in a matter of weeks, guys. Learned the hard way. Stay away from trees. God damn it. Um, what other shots were there? With, oh, yeah. Well, there was Hoth. These are all, this is all drawn stuff and Hoth. 
And uh, that was nice. That really helped. That's not there. That's real camera. You can see the quality difference between the big camera. <clears throat> that was taken by my bro. He's behind the camera there. Beautiful, isn't it? Hoth. Lovely spot. Not far from me, from where I grew up. Right by it. It's the lighthouse. Lovely spot out there. <clears throat> you know, honestly, you've got to be careful with drone footage because it can get a little boring. You know, you've got to... You know, I'm sure there's a temptation to overuse the footage, and maybe I, I'm guilty of that a little bit. But, like, these shots are just too panoramic, you know, too nice. But you've got to get back to the real shots then. <clears throat> because otherwise it can tend to look a little bit youtube -y or something, you know. Like, that's a real shot with a focus pull. There's a nice focus pull there from close-up shrubs or whatever they are to uh lighthouse in the distance there's a good thing about the zoom camera it can flatten a shot so much like uh, the zoom lens i mean look at that like that in the foreground you have the pier and behind it you have ireland's eye and behind Ireland's eye, this little island there, you have Lambay Island. Now, if you were to guess, if I said to you, how do you, how far do you think Ireland's eye is from the, from the pier there? You'd say, I don't know, like 300 meters, 500 meters. It's actually one mile away. But as you'll see in a shot coming up, let me speed this up. Playback speed. Um, it's actually really fucking far away. Uh, that doesn't even show it as well. You'll see when the drone is flying out toward it. Where is it here? There, look. Look at it flying out. I didn't even get halfway. I mean, it could have gone all the way. But look, it looks right beside them there. That's what a zoom lens will do. It will flatten an image so incredibly. <clears throat> but then, you saw that there. If I can catch the fucking shot. Ugh, this is annoying. There, look. It's flying out to the that'll give you an idea how far it is away. <laughs> it's just the zoom lens is crazy, man. It's fucking you can get so much done. You can flatten a foreground and a midground and a long shot then. <clears throat> so that was good. Oh yes, the other questions were. That, by the way, is the bloody stream chowder that our friend is eating as we speak, or he's probably finished it by now. Really, really good. Very plain looking. The plainer it looks. Well, you see in part two, guys, <laughs> it's a whole other level. Is like the West puts the East Coast to shame when it comes to chowder. My God. Whole different thing completely. Um Yes, there was this stuff about Grace. First of all, that is not sped up footage. Some people are asking about that. I did for dramatic purposes in some shots, and I think it's pretty clear, I did speed up the shot so that the clouds looked like they were moving too fast. That's not that, <laughs> okay? That's how fast the <laughs> sky moves by in Ireland. It's crazy. It's weird. Anyway, uh, these shots of Hoth Castle. Yeah, people were asking me about the Grace O'Malley stuff. So Grace comes in now. Now, footage of Grace O'Malley, of course, is, doesn't exist. She died in the 1500s. But 
<clears throat> there have been artists who have painted her and people have tried to reenact her and so on. And honestly, it's slim pickings. So what I did is I got in with AI. I used AI, shame to say. And um, I started building video. If you'll notice, these look like pictures, but they're actually, some of them are moving. See the waves in the background are actually moving. Okay, that's obviously just an artist drawing. But um, you'll see there, you see those waves in the background and her hair is moving a little in the wind. This is all generated by AI. So it almost looks like footage, but it's not. This is the power of AI now, guys, Jesus. Everybody get ready, because the world is about to change. It's pretty scary, actually, what, what AI is capable of. This is obviously just an artist's drawing. But you see there, it's almost like I was on the ship, or someone was on the ship behind her. And there she is looking at the sea. <clears throat> These take a while to render. And I generated probably, I don't know, maybe <sighs> somewhere in the region of 100 different clips. I just generated and generated. Like, as I was working on other stuff, I would just leave the other machine, just generate them, and just pile them up and use them like that's a completely invented image <clears throat> i think it was dirk was saying there's no way she was that good looking <laughs> it's probably true it's unlikely grace was that pretty but it's not hard to look at that image is it so why not <laughs> let me catch up on the chat <clears throat> Yeah, the AI, she looks a bit like Kate. I guess she does a little bit. The AI stuff was, yeah, it was a help because if you have a good story to tell, then, you know, it works. Okay, no more Super Chats, fine. Have it your way. What else uh, was there? Uh, yeah, then there was this stuff about um, about the clouds. So that's kind of the first introduction of something a bit more surreal. This guy was just filming and he's playing the spoons. <laughs> Classic, you know. Well, I'm trying to have fun here. and read Okay, that's playing really fast because I have it on extra fast. So it's silly. Sorry, let's go for Dublin. There's something that keeps bothering and distracting me. Now, this is the hand of God shit happening again, okay? We've spoken about this before. I didn't intend this to happen, but it just kind of came out of nowhere. I'm not okay? sure I ever noticed this before, but the sky is racing overhead. So I realized that if the spoons keep playing, and I add a little bit of reverb and ambience to them and then start speeding them up, then they'll match with the clouds. Clouds don't normally move this fast. Do they? Like that footage there, I swear, is not... Like I go down, you see the people on the street, they're not moving all fast or anything. They're walking... At Nobody around me seems to notice or care. Perhaps it's not real. Okay, so that there, that shot there, I went a little bit crazy. Like, I, I, I wanted to push it a bit. So you see on the bottom half of the screen, you see everyone is moving slow. The traffic, they're all in slow motion. But the, but the clouds are moving fast. I'll play that again. Perhaps it's not real. So you have fast moving clouds and you have everyone in slow motion. So not only are the clouds sped up, 
there for dramatic effect. But the real world is kind of getting dreamy, and that's why I'm pushing the idea that maybe I'm hallucinating or something. There's something going on that no one else has seen this. I'm seeing it because Grace is fucking with my head because she knows I'm here and she's trying to tell me to come out west. You see, that's the whole idea. So what I did with this, and any videographers are probably going, no, you didn't. <laughs> okay. So what I did is I drew a mask between the lower half of the image and the upper half of the image. Now that's easy if you just have a regular horizon. But when you have an image that's cut here by the Bank of Ireland here on the left and Trinity College on the right and all these details, you have to get in and draw it. So I went all, all the way around. I hope you guys can see the mouse. I went all the way around. Easy to draw that bit there on the right. That's just a straight line. But then you have to get in and draw around all these corners, all these little chimneys. You see these little guys? Draw all the way around there and go all the way around. That's an easy bit there. I left out this because it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you can't tell with this pole. So I skipped that and I kept going down. And then I had to do all of this, obviously zoomed right in. I have to zoom in like 800% to get all the detail. Because if you watch this on a big, big screen or on VR headset, you're going to see if I left out corners, you're going to see glitches. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, someone's going to watch this on like an 80 inch screen or on maybe in a little mini cinema or something, and they're going to see it. So I have to go right in and draw all around all these little chimneys and everything. <laughs> these were, these were shitloads of fall. These fuckers right here. That took me forever. And then all the way down and all the way around and then all the way around the bank. So now I have two images. One is the sky moving, and that's one layer, and then everything below it. So I slow down everything below it, and I speed up everything above it. Maybe. Uh, and, all, and all for two seconds of video. Perhaps it's not real. Maybe. Same there again. This guy is actually a separate layer from everything below it. Everything below it is actually moving slower. BMP. If you notice, the bus is turning the corner kind of quite slowly there. Sorry about this. <clears throat> oh, actually, no, they're running at a regular pace, but they are separated. So I drew around the trees. Good thing, good tip is these trees here. They're not fun because you can see the clouds through them. But these trees down there, you can cut straight through the tree. It'll work anyway. But all these chimneys, all this all this lineage here, all this topography, you might call it, along the roofs, you've got to go through it piece by piece. You can do it kind of in a general manner at first to make sure it's working, but then you've got to get in and grab all your points and adjust them. So that way you get the lower half of the image and the upper half of the image moving at different speeds. Then you add a little bit of zoom to the whole thing and it gives it that dream quality. See the way I'm zooming out? So the other one I was zooming um, in, I Perhaps think. It's not real. Yeah, I'm zooming in there. So I grab both layers and I zoom in on both. And then this one zooms out. Maybe I'm being summoned. Same again here I drew. <laughs> Drew around these fuckers. I know every detail of these stupid statues at this point because I know because I had to go around them. And there's a fucking bird on that one. So that was tons of fun. Thank you, bird. Right now I'm dealing with a whole di different thing in part two of a bloody sheep that walks past a really important part. I'm like, oh, God damn you. Someone knows I'm back home. And they're trying to send me a message. Here's Grace coming through. Who that might be. Let me get back to the chat again. Is this boring? I don't know. Is this boring shit? I don't know. <clears throat> Let me know. You guys want me to talk about the fucking... I'll talk about the moon swatch in a minute then. Matthew Wood. Oh, shit. hundred bucks. Friday nights are now enjoyable again. Thank you, Oshin, from Matthew. An Englishman married to a lady 
from on Don Leary, Don Learach. I actually had footage from Don Leary, but it didn't make the cut, unfortunately. Cool, man. Thank you. Uh, that deserves you know, Steel Dirk stuff. You know, I'm going to play a different, different mega super chat. <laughs> That was the real Leonard Bernstein, not, not Bradley Cooper. Uh, yeah, okay, well, look, I, can, I could go on the Ireland fucking thing forever. Okay, here's here's an interesting one then from the Ireland video before I move on briefly to the moon swatch thing and my thoughts. Um, the Patrick Kavanagh thing. Because I'm uh, reciting Raglan on Raglan Road, and of course he's talking about this woman that he was in love with, and it didn't work. And he sees her now with her brown hair. Of course, she has brown hair. Is the character he keeps mentioning her brown hair? And I was just really, really lucky because he says, um, "I uh, I see you now." I see her now uh, w walking away from me so hurriedly. And I just got really lucky in one shot because because uh, a girl with brown hair happened to just walk past and um, walking kind of away from him, you know, you know, passing by. But it framed with the words, it almost looks like that's her. She's passed him and she doesn't speak to him anymore and she's just a stranger now. Uh, let me see where the shot is. Heels of May. On a quiet street where old ghosts meet. I see her walking now. There she goes. Away from me. So hurriedly. My reason must allow. That's called luck, guys. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little luck to um, evening, Brendan Duffy from Scotland. Sometimes you need that luck just to get the great shots, and uh, it it just happens. Unfortunately for me, on the technical side, I did not shoot it in high speed, so I had to take regular twenty four frame footage and optimize it frame optimize it but it's just great that you're able to line up with you know i see her walking now away from me so hurriedly it's just it works on a quiet street where old ghosts meet i see her walking now away from me so hurriedly my reason must allow You know, that's pretty... That I had wooed not as I should. A creature made of clay. Yeah. It's good stuff. It gets a bit sad uh, toward the end there. But... Um, and these are actually all the first shots. These are the pool bag chimneys here. Very famous. In Dublin. First YouTube video ever featured these. Um... But yes, uh, these are some of the first shots of a beautiful sunny day when I got there and got these magnificent um, panoramas. This is a shot that, if you're watching it on your phone, is completely lost. And part two is going to be full of shots like this that you need to watch it on a big screen or watch it on your VR headset or something so you have a huge cinema screen in front of you because you're going to see tiny stuff like... You're going to see all the detail move, you know. Um, to head my soul in this town. And then, of course, I come back to the clouds theme here. I'm talking about Dublin and, you know, how it's moved me being here and all of that kind of stuff. But then, um, 
But then I pan off to the clouds because the clouds continue to tell me, you know, there's a message going, come on. But I know it's time to head out west. <clears throat> To the old Ireland to go find Grace and show her that I'm okay. Now you can't see it in this tiny screen right now, but if you watch this on high high definition, there's one lonely uh, seagull flying in this shot, in the center of the shot. So that's symbolism there. <clears throat> but before I move off it, uh, I have some, I have some Easter eggs in there. Like you guys always find my Easter eggs, right? This little symbolism and stuff. And I'm going to give you one while we're at it. So the old Ireland is the West. That's, that's the old, old Ireland. And that's where I'm headed. And that's, the truly, truly special Ireland, you might say. <clears throat> but I'm not wearing, um, I'm wearing, I didn't wear a green watch to Dolan. I wore it blue and gold because they're the colors, blue in particular. Because they're, first of all, they're the Dublin flag, and also they're the, the original color of Ireland. But it's undeniable that Ireland has an association with green, and there's green all over the place. And we've kind of adopted it as our as our national color in a modern way, okay? Probably just for tourism, but fine. So the next time, yeah, Gloria, Kieran, yeah, Gloria, it's the Gloria video with the Pubeg, the chimneys. <laughs> um so I'm going to the part two has a different watch. It has my Royal Oak offshore, the green one, the green strap. That's very, very featured in part two. So I'm saving the green for the West of Ireland. Okay. And that's old Ireland. All right. And I want to show you something, <laughs> which is just uh fucking crazy <clears throat> let me get to where i go to kilmainham jail okay this is where i go to Col oh yeah here's another little thing I'm just think while i think of these things they end on this traditional music from the previous scene they end on the same note in key with the next piece of music Here is the same note, same tonic, linking perfectly in, right? I had been avoiding it, <clears throat> but I was urged by family members to go. Anybody see that? <laughs> Let me go back. So I'm going to the old Ireland to wear the Royal Oak. <clears throat> Good enough. I know, I know, I'm nuts, I'm nuts. I belong in a mental asylum. <clears throat> so, let's talk briefly about uh, the uh, moon swatch moon phase. This white watch. How does everybody feel about it? I mean, it's stirring up a lot of emotion for a lot of people. 
it's kind of crazy because I think we're looking at a, re a repeat of what happened two years ago. All the moons watch, I mean, they released what was 11, a set of 11 moon swatches and it was a shock to the watch world and you know it was a frenzy it's kind of crazy because it coincided with um the dip you know the fall from the spike in the market who knows if it played a role but um we all saw that madness over these of this bunch particularly i think the most popular one was the moon the mission to the moon and the mission to mercury which is one of the most handsome of the, of the bunch um but then they came out with a bunch of these things with funny looking hands it was just like a the second's hand was new big fucking deal like who gives a shit like i don't know why no one no one cared and people kind of lost interest and then of course the um the blanc pan the 50 fathoms swatch was released which wasn't met with the same enthusiasm it was met with a little and there were some lines and people trying to get them trying to sell them on ebay for above retail or whatever but it didn't it certainly didn't have the same impact or anything close to it so um i guess we've all been kind of thinking well all the air came out of that tire at this point and then they release this white thing it's a fully white watch let me see if there's a better photo of it here yeah this here that's all the details fully white with a moon face which whether you like these watches or not that's gotta be sexy to you i mean a moon face that's cool man that's one of the most romantic complications you can have on a watch right now the the moment i saw it i thought Bleh. This thing is going to get filthy so fucking fast because it's all white. I mean, the strap is going to get filthy, like crazy filthy, real, real fast. Sure, over a different screen here. But um, the watch probably will too, being plastic, white plastic. My feelings on it, I don't know how I feel about pure white watches in the first place. White really attracts a lot of people. When it comes to the Daytona, the ceramic Daytona, people always love that panda with the white. My favorite is the TIE Fighters, the black one. I think it's a much more handsome watch than the white. But white dials do attract people. They're always very popular, especially as we head into summer. <clears throat> I always prefer an off-white, something like ivory or something a little less than you know, pure white can look like toothpaste to me sometimes. So I don't know how I feel about this thing being pure white like that with the black. I mean, I suppose it's going to be a very legible watch, black against white like that. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> the part that I like is this moon phase thing. I just love moon phase. I don't know why. I love the fact that our measurements of time are all based on astronomy. We're all based on our on our chase around the sun. You know, that's what it comes down to. They're not literal measurements of time or units of time. We, there is no such thing. We don't even truly know what time is still to this day. But when you put moon phase on a watch, now you're really leaning into the fact that it's uh, 
it's connected to astronomy. It's connected to the rotation of the earth and the rotation around the sun. So I love that stuff. And of course the connection with the moon because of Snoopy and because of the moon watch. But man, look at the back of this one. <laughs> Tell me this thing isn't going to be like all filthy black after like two weeks of wearing it. That shit is going to soak up all your gunk from your wrist. This thing is just going to be like hideously black or off gray or whatever on this surface here. And the pushers are still going to be white, you know, and the, the, the crown is going to be a little bit off white because you're winding it and using it. I, I just feel like these watches, unless they've done something with the, with the, you know, the material they're using. I feel like these watches are all going to look hideous after six months. And then there'll be a market for untouched, unworn ones. Because I'm not sure you could call this patina. Somebody on Instagram said, isn't that what we call patina? I think patina is a euphemism for this. Like, I'm not sure. It's a bit generous to call it patina. <clears throat> the dial is going to remain white because it's protected under on under the the glass or the mineral crystal or whatever it is. What is it anyway? It's not hesalite, is it? I was saying it's too plasticky. I would agree. It kind of looks plasticky because of the because it's such pure white. It looks a little plasticky to me. Wrist cheddar magnet, Connor. That's the way to put it. It's a wrist cheddar magnet. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's so true and so sad. James Ball, it's 270 pounds. Why? 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 Why is a Rolex Submariner 10,000 bucks? Why is a Richard Meal, a half a million bucks. Why? We don't get to ask why in the watch world. There is no why. <laughs> it's why because people will pay for it. That's why. It's a simple answer. But I, I'm right there with you, man. I, I get it. I'm just saying. It's not a question we get to ask in this hobby. None of this shit makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> Poutina, Kiran. <laughs> How's this? Yeah, well, we should have a different name for the patina, right? You're right. This isn't a moon watch. It's a moon swatch. So when it patinas, it's Poutina. It's dead skin cells all over the watch, which is all over every other watch you own, but you can't see them. And are easily watch washed off of steel or gold or whatever. Washing this thing, I don't think it's going to be an option. But I think that there will be lines down the street. I think that's going to happen again. Because, at least for the first few weeks, because it's, it's, it's re-injected some excitement. Finally, they did something fun and exciting again with this idea. This is the one they should have brought out straight after the the first 11. I guess they learned their lesson the hard way. It's kind of cool that the, the stars at night loom up like that. Now, can anyone tell me, the, I can't sleep without a nightlight. Is that any reference to anything, or is that just a fun little thing that they wrote? You know, is that some reference to something? Was that a Snoopy thing or a, does the character ever say that? I can't sleep without a nightlight. <clears throat> it's just a fun thing, says Tony, Tony. That's yeah, a nice little thing. It would have been nice if it had import behind it, if there was a reason to it. Yeah, Flipper Parade, says Tony Tony. You're right. Like, it's certainly the, the next, you know, week we're going to see that big time. 
Daniel. Is that true? A thousand bucks on eBay already. Yeah. People pre listing them. Guys who are ready to camp out. They're going to camp out probably from tomorrow or Sunday. It's been released on Tuesday morning, right? You're going to see these guys with their deck chairs. I mean, how much money can they really make? They can only buy one per person or one per credit card. Can it really be that much profit? Surely there are better ways to make a few bucks. But, you know, you're going to have these guys doing it. I mean, with the first ones, I'm opening a little French wine, by the way, guys. I haven't been drinking much tonight, just a little bit of whiskey. I was at dinner earlier and we had wine, so I didn't want to get too crazy. But I'm opening uh, Pesac Lognang Chateau de la Rue. Oh, it's not Pesac Lognang, it's a fucking Saint Emilion. Sorry. One of those. It's a Saint Emilion adjacent to Pomerol. <clears throat> there were guys the first time around who got who had a, they 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 got it down to a a fine art. They were getting you know a shitload of prepaid credit cards and handing or debit cards or whatever and handing them to young kids and going okay everybody get in line. You know these sixteen year old kids or whatever. <laughs> They're all getting in line, 25 of them, buying one per person. And then when they come out, they just hand them to the main dude and he'd give them 50 bucks each or whatever. Now, now that those guys have perfected their technique already and figured out how to make it work, the groundwork is done. The design is there. They're ready now to implement the same... <laughs> Uh, savvy into this new thing. So that's what they're going to do with this one. So if anything, it's going to be fucking worse. Because when everyone was playing a guessing game the first time and trying to figure out what um, were the details of the sale of this thing. Do you remember when it was it was two years ago? This time two years ago, there were two, two per person, which quickly went to one per person. And then a lot of stores were getting 50 delivered. So the first 50 people of 3,000 waiting were getting the watch and everyone else was going home empty handed. It was a fucking disaster. What a shit show that was. What's going to happen this time around? Are they going to deliver thousands to each store for the first day, for Tuesday? Or is there only going to be a few hundred each day? like it was the last time. At least this time they only have one watch. You know? The last time they had 11, so people were walking in going, do you have a mission to Mercury? And they're like, no, we've got the mission to the sun, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> yeah, we've got the one you don't want. Whatever's left. This time around, they only have one watch to deliver, so maybe they can deliver more of the one watch. I mean, if the flippers, the scalpers, whatever you call them, um, have learned their lesson, Omega and Swatch have also learned their lessons, correct? That would be correct to assume. So maybe this time around, they can make this less of a fiasco People getting crushed on the streets of London. I consider 
lining up for one of these on the first time around for the channel's sake you know had i had one in my hand the morning after or the day of i would have gotten two million views you know would have been worth it for the channel that's kind of my responsibility anyway whether i like the watch or not to talk about it and to show it and buy one and display it and photo the shit out of it like i do <clears throat> but uh when i saw the line outside the swatch store here in venice and there is one and i'm expecting there to be a line again um this coming tuesday or monday or whatever when I saw that line, I was like, ah, fuck that. I don't care enough to stand in line, especially on the prospect, with the prospect of the fact that you may, of the possibility that you may finally get into the store after being in line for hours and be told, no, no, we sold it at the last one, like an hour ago, sorry, you know. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if I care enough about this thing. I do like the moon phase. That's cool. And what is that? Is that moon and sun phase? Or is it just two moon phases back to back? And does it tick? Or does it move slowly? Is this a mecha quartz movement? I mean, after all, when you engage the second, uh, the chronograph hand on a moon swatch, and I have a few of them, four or five of them, they um, the chrono hand ticks like a regular chrono hand, like a mechanical chrono hand. It doesn't go second per second. It does. It's you know eight beats per second or whatever it is, ticks, whatever. So it looks relatively smooth. Whereas the second hand ticks like a quartz. That makes me think of mecha quartz, where you have a mechanical chronograph structure built on top of a quartz watch. So how does the how does little Snoopy go around? Does he tick or does he move slowly? These are all the questions <laughs> that we care about. I'll tell you one thing. If you stick this watch on a different colored strap, like you pick a nice blue or a green or anything, not red. Red is going to be too stark. Even black might work. That will liven this watch up a lot. Let me see if there are photos of the straps. This one, yeah, let me show you that one. Because that strap is going to be filthy. When I bought a replacement uh, white strap for the AP Chron Offshore Chrono, I wanted a white one because it comes on black, but white looks really nice on that watch too. And it was for, I don't know, 500 bucks or something. It was fucking AP. But they were like, are you sure you want white? I was like, yeah, it's summer. I have a tan. And when you wear white on a tan, you look even more tanned. Um, they were like, okay, just as long as you know that uh, it's going to get pretty filthy pretty quickly. <laughs> so don't come back to us complaining. That's just the nature of white. It's going to start looking all dirty. Honestly, I didn't wear it enough to ever make it dirty, but you see this Velcro or whatever the hell it is? I oh, mean, that's going to get grimy in a hurry. I reckon take it, do what many people do, did and take off, take that strap off, put it back in the box so you can keep it pristine. Could be a collector's item someday. And stick something else on it. Stick a blue or a yellow or something summery. I think that's the smarter thing to do. 
Oh, it's so white, though. It's so white. You know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of those hospital bandages, you know, or when you get a new uh, a cast on your broken arm, and the first day or two, it's just so bright white and pristine. Those bandages are so shiny, and then very quickly just start getting faded looking. They start looking like an old tea bag. <laughs> By the time your arm is healed and you go back in to get the cast off, the thing is fucking grotesque. <laughs> it's like, makes me think of that. I don't know why. It just, it just smacks of that problem. You imagine people in with their toothbrush months down the line trying to get the grime out of these little corners here, these nooks and crannies. Oh, boy. If you're lucky enough to get one and you don't give a shit about wearing it, you've got plenty of other gorgeous watches. Maybe you have a real moon watch. Leave it in the box and put it away with the stickers on. Someday it'll be worth something like an original iPhone is today or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Somebody was asking me about a smoke. Yeah, I'm having a Romeo and Julieta, courtesy of Fergal and Louise that I met earlier today. Uh, earlier this evening, I should say. For dinner, it's very lovely. I don't know. That's a lot of fucking white. That's a lot of white. I mean, couldn't they have made the bezel a, a kind of a light gray? You know, just give it some depth. This is just some crazy ass bright white staring at me. I mean, forget this picture here. Like, you'll never see, you'll only see that when you pull out, you're, you're crazy like me and you carry the fucking little UV LED lamp with you and all your, every pocket of every coat I have has a little fucking lamp in it because I'm a nutbag and I like to see my loom all the time. But most people will never see this. <laughs> most people never see their loom lit up. You know, we do as watch nerds, but you're going to see that the first day and then kind of rarely ever look at it again. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess you're either into white or not. Like the the pure white, uh, speedy, yeah. The new one, the white dial Seamaster, that was quite popular. Yeah, never did much for me, honestly, because of the white that it is. If it was a little off white or ivory or some sort of faded white, that that can look different. That can be different. I can have, it's like Cartier, you know, Cartier white dials so often are ivory and it's just, ooh, yeah. Or there's a silveriness to them or something, you know. This is a bandage. This is a brand new bandage of the hospital white. That's fucking trouble, man. <laughs> Sorry. What do you guys think? You disagree? At the same time, it's only a couple of hundred, a few hundred bucks. So maybe you just wear it for the summer, enjoy it, and trash it. Let me uh, set up the redirect over to the Bashers. Go over to Dirk about this watch and talk about Kate Middleton. My God. I gotta say, I think it's devastating news. Fuck. First thing. What does she ever do wrong to anyone? Jesus Christ. The perfect royal. Anyway, good chat. Jeez, two hours go by fast, man. Order a passport. Good to see you. Came in late, did you? 
there's no need for plastic on my wrist, baby. Well, you don't wear anything but fucking gold. We all know, we all know about you. <laughs> Are you wearing your rose gold uh, speedy yet? Or is it still in the box? You madman. Give me that thing. Des Farrell, Cuban cigar prices have been jacked up by a perfect storm of Asian demand and bad crops. I can only afford non-Cubans. I'm right there with you, man. The Trinidads, oh my God. And the, um, I think the Partagas are still in the same place though. Have Partagas gone up? I hope not. <clears throat> Yeah, they've gone up a lot. There was a big dip in production. I've got a stiff neck. I hope I didn't catch Culpa Daria tonight in the cold. We were sitting outside. It was nice, though. It wasn't too cold. Too much white for my old eyes on the big telly. Yeah, you're right, man. All right, guys. Uh, let's go over to Dirk. Time flies, says thanks, Oshin. Praise, praise for Kate. God bless. Yeah, let's hope she's all right. Again, she's the only one I fucking give a shit about. <sighs> fucking figures. <clears throat> um, leave it, Ron. I'll do anything, let it play. It'll pop over automatically if you have autoplay on. Otherwise, you have to go over to the iBashers channel. I should put the link in the chat for anybody who's interested because I'm going to continue the conversation. The Dirkus Maximus. See how he feels about that stuff. Uh, thanks for any super chats, guys. There's the link. God, that was complex. Damn it. Spell check. Shane McGuire. What did you write? There's the link in the chat, guys. It's complex, isn't it? Fuck. Just click on it. Shane McGuire. There you are. Thanks for amazing part one. Work will last forever. Thanks, man. That's very nice. Part two coming in a couple of weeks, hopefully. A couple of weeks. Give me two weeks. Two, three weeks. I'll put out other stuff before then. And I'll do a live walk about now that the weather's getting better. How about that? All right, guys. I'll see you over there. Thanks for the company. I'll see you in two seconds over with Dirk. Just let it run or hit that link. And I'll see you there. I've still got plenty of cigar to get through. And a whole bottle of Chateau de la Rue Saint-Emilion. Thanks for keeping me company. See you guys very soon, as in in five seconds.